Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Uh, just recently on Twitter, I noticed that uh, somebody pointed out that the uh, government office, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, to study UFOs and to report those findings back to Congress, actually has a uh, new logo, a Latin logo. Actually, this was pointed out on Twitter uh, by Project Unity. Uh, Project Unity, by the way, has a, a YouTube channel, uh, very good stuff on there. Uh, anyway, the Latin uh, uh, logo basically says Universum Mutao Est Vita Nostra Est Quad Cognitations Nostra Facir Est. Now, I probably completely butchered that because I don't speak Latin, but uh, that's the words, that's how I read it. But anyway, what it really means in English is the universe is changing. Our life is what our thoughts make it. And that's very interesting uh, coming from a government office. And uh, I have some thoughts on that. Now, now I'm going to present the theory. And, and before I present this theory, I want to make it known that I don't believe in this theory whatsoever. However, it is something that occurred to me. And, uh, and this seeing this new logo for the Arrow office actually, uh, you know, made me think about this, this crazy theory I have. Uh, again, basically, okay, now the logo again states, the universe is changing, our life is what our thoughts make it. Now, you know, there was a, back in the 1950s, uh, there was a science fiction movie that came out, it was called Forbidden Planet, and in that movie, uh, one of the stars of that movie was Leslie Nielsen, I'm sure a lot of you remember Leslie Nielsen as the uh uh, police lieutenant frank drebin from the naked gun movies from the 80s and early 90s uh classic comedy films and this guy turned out to be a great comedian but before that this guy was more mostly a serious actor he was in a lot of serious mo movies and then in 1980 he appeared in a comedy film called airplane and after that that uh, was you know he, he that's when he started uh, showing his his comic uh talents in, in different films but before that he was in serious type movies and tv shows a lot of television shows uh, throughout the 50s 60s and 70s in fact he played the captain on uh for in the movie the original 1972 movie uh the poseidon adventure but anyway he was in this movie in 1956 called forbidden planet and some of you probably seen this some of you probably have heard of it some of you have probably never heard of it at all uh but anyway it is basically considered probably the best, most imaginative science fiction movie to come out of the 1950s. Uh, I mean, it was shot in color and it had some really good special effects for the time. It, the movie still holds up today, has a great story, a uh, fascinating story. In fact, uh, one of my brothers, it's like one of his favorite science fiction movies. Um, and it's one of mine too. I think it's a, a really en entertaining science fiction movie. But when I saw it, when I see this this new logo for Arrow, it made me think about that movie, and I'll tell you why. Again, well, I'll just read this again to you. It says, "The universe is changing. Our life is what our thoughts make it." And that's interesting because, again, if you think about this movie, for those of you who have seen it, now I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, if you, in case you haven't seen it, I'm, I'm, it's going to be a small spoilers here uh, just to give you the, the lowdown, lowdown on what was going on in this movie. But basically, there's this planet that's discovered uh, called Altair 4. And uh, on this planet, there was this, uh, they, they find that uh, there's all this equipment. Uh, machinery still in operation even though the alien race that lived there and built this machinery is long extinct actually they they were extinct for when they found this planet this race of beings called the krell were extinct for like ten thousand centuries and uh so what what, the, what what is learned during the course of this movie is that the reason they went extinct is because uh, and this machinery, by the way, when they find this planet, all this machinery is all still operational. It's, it's creating this incredible energy field throughout the whole planet. And what is learned throughout the course of this movie is that the reason that, they, they, that this race of beings went extinct is because they actually uh, were able uh, they, they reached a, a level of, of technology that is unimaginable, basically. They basically uh, were able to uh, create life without it without any instrumentalities in other words they were able to basically whatever you whatever uh, uh one of these beings 
thought of if they wanted, if they wanted, say, a plate of food, it would just appear. They would be able to use their thoughts and, and this stuff would appear. They actually reached a level of technology where they didn't need anything else anymore. They had this machinery that would always be in, be working and, and, and would maintain itself. That would require no work whatsoever. And, and the power that this machine uh, created would allow these beings on this planet basically to whatever they imagined would come true. But see, the problem for them, even though they were so advanced, is that... Uh, the, the 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 inner demons the you know the, the the animal instincts that were buried deep inside you know in, inside of all these beings in their id in their subconscious right uh revealed itself so if they felt if if one of them felt hatred or or, or something you know anger toward another then their secret they could conjure up a secret monster that would kill 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 their enemy or, you know and and that's how they ended up destroying themselves because all of them basically were able to they conjured up their own monsters and all these monsters tore them apart and ended their whole civilization so and now it's a it's a very interesting movie again and 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 the concept of it is is fascinating however again let's look at this this uh comment that, or actually this new logo for, for arrow uh it says the universe is changing our life is what our thoughts make it now now again i i don't subscribe to this theory but again it's just something to throw out there uh because there is something going on okay there are beings there are things that if people have seen there are craft that are flying around there's there are flying saucers i mean just recently i was talking about some of the crazier stories uh that have happened uh throughout the years like in 1964 the incident in california with this hunter uh named donald shrum who who basically uh was ha hiding out in a tree uh over the course of an entire night while these uh, alien beings and a robot tried to get him down and basically apparently to you know abduct him and take him away but he survived that whole ordeal and and the things just went away i mean basically a gigantic fly a gigantic cylinder shaped flying saucer showed up and out of that or excuse me a cylinder shaped uh, craft showed up and out of that craft the flying saucer came out and the next thing you know there was uh uh alien beings uh, standing under under this tree where he was hiding trying to get him to come down and meanwhile a robot showed up on top of it uh, a robot that looked like something out of a 1950 science fiction movie and uh would, would sometimes uh uh spit gas uh, some sort of a gas toward him and and it would make him pass out moment uh, temporarily and he every time he would uh he would wake up sometimes and, and some of these beings were trying to climb the tree to get him and he then he would when, once he would wake up he would throw things at these things and they would climb back down but anyway here so he survived the ordeal and he was able to he lived to talk about it and it was a case that was actually investigated by not only ufo researchers but the united states air force looked into it uh but there's a lot of cases like that there's all kinds of cases all kinds of beings sometimes it's not just the grays or the or or, or you know or the praying mantis uh, or the uh, style aliens or the reptilian styles there's all there's all different kinds of beings sometimes there's robots and whether they're all part of the same team or not we really don't know but my theory is and this again i don't believe in this theory but it's just something to talk about is that what if somehow uh over the course of centuries like like we're, we're dreaming these things into existence somehow there's an unseen power like our collective unconscious actually conjures these things into reality and they become real and they are real then because i've again i've seen one of these craft and i've seen one of the beings and and that stuff was real but what if they're the product of of the of the human uh, of a collective unconscious of the entire human race that we conjured these things somehow into existence it's a crazy idea but again it's just something to think about because we really i mean right now we don't have any answers the government's not playing ball uh not not enough i don't think anyway some people are very excited uh i'm still upset uh with the way the government has been acting and, and of course how the even more so the mainstream media i'm actually more angry with the mainstream media right now than i am with the pentagon but 
you know, here's the thing. You know, if you look at the human race, we we, we all think of things. You know, and, and like like in, in in centuries past, okay, at some point, you know, we 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 imagine some sort of a system to travel across the United States, for instance, or Europe, or whatever, and we and we and pe somebody dreamed, and we all dream up together somehow. There's of course there's some people who put it together and 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 you know, uh, you know have the technical ex expertise to 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 figure it out but like a train a train system okay at some at one point we didn't have trains right so we imagined it into existence and we created it of course you could you could go back and you could okay these are the people that are responsible for inventing the uh, uh the the steam locomotive or, or whatever right same thing with vehicles cars planes whatever we 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 imagine like these things anything that we think of that that we that we 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 want we wish we had at some point it seems like it's happening like we're we're making it happen right uh now of course there are people that are inventors and and, and technicians that are responsible right but at the same time it's the human race we were thinking of these things and then they do happen and these pe and other people actually put it together and, and make it possible and present it to us i mean is it possible that uh somehow we have conjured this extra well, our deep unconscious thoughts right the collective unconscious of humankind at some point did we start uh conjuring these things into existence like if you consider in uh, uh the great airship mystery of 1896 and 1897 for instance okay a lot of people throughout the united states start, started seeing these giant airships flying around right and and there was no real answer to it one of them apparently crashed in april of 1897 uh in aurora texas and a, an, an alien being was in it did did we conjure that into existence like do we conjure all of this into existence it sounds insane and again i'm not saying i believe in this theory but it's just something to put out there it's something to consider uh, and it's interesting, uh, you know, th during 1896, 1897, during that great airship mystery, uh, not long or during the same time when that uh, Aurora incident happened in April of 1897, H.G. Wells was just publishing uh, his book war of the worlds at that time we, we we were thinking of these things like in 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 the in the unconscious and the collective unconscious of of humankind we were thinking of these things of the possibility of beings from other planets coming here and then you know airships show up and then of course you know after world war ii ends it seems like things really picked up then now of course there was sightings of different things throughout history and past in fact during world war ii before world war ii right but after world war ii in 1947 you know it seemed like things really picked up of course in, in july of, in june of 1947 that's when this whole the first big gigantic ufo flap occurred right and of, of course one of the things that happened during that well the first thing was the kenneth arnold sighting and then of course there was the roswell incident and all that kind of stuff right and it's never stopped ever since but did somehow did the human race uh in its subconscious in its collective unconscious somehow conjure all of this into existence because these are deep-seated fears that we all have of of what could possibly be out there what could come and get us right and and we have these fears but and somehow we're uh, we're creating this we created these things that are here now that are showing up and doing things abducting people creating a hybrid race all of it right is it possible that this is all a product of our own minds that oh we we, we have no control over this is it because we're, we're we're making it happen we and we don't even though we don't we don't know it we don't realize it but at the same time we are making it happen because deep inside most of the minds of many people throughout this world these are the things we imagine and, and that, that are possible and then they somehow come to pass and they have come some something has come to pass because there is something here and there's something going on anyway it's just an idea that i had and whether or whether or not there's any uh veracity to it i doubt it but again it was just something i thought was interesting uh to bring up and talk about uh, and it's just you know I, again i don't i i don't 
I don't believe in this theory. I don't think that's what's happening. But again, the, seeing that that comment, uh, excuse me, seeing that new logo made me think of this. And actually, this was a, a, a theory that I had toyed around in my mind with a long time ago. Years ago, I thought about this, you know, watching that movie and thinking, you know, what if that were possible? What if we were able to create a life without instrumentalities uh, like, they, like these beings did on this uh, fic fictional planet and forbidden planet? Uh, and, and you know and when you think about that then you start wondering what if and if that were the case maybe we, we could conjure up anything you'd be you'd be able to conjure up any sort of monsters or alien invaders or whatever bigfoot all of it what if we're conjuring up everything and we don't even realize it like every like all of our like you know we, we're working with computers now i remember back in the 70s we weren't even close this kind of technology you know if somebody would have walked in with a laptop and a cell phone you know i would have ran out the door in, in in stark terror because it just seemed like something impossible at the time now it's 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 common it's all common anyway it's it's something to think about but again i again i want to make it clear i'm not saying that this theory is correct i don't say that i believe it i don't think that these i think these things are coming from someplace else i don't believe that they that they are actually uh, uh, uh basically a physical manifestation of uh caused by our by the human uh, uh unconscious by the collective unconscious of all humankind i'm not saying that i'm just saying that that's that it's a theory